Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be doing another SPF powder review, one that many of you have requested, and that is the Paula's Choice On The Go Shielding Powder. So if you wanna hear my thoughts on this powder, see how it applies on the skin and holds up with multiple reapplications throughout the day, then we will jump right into it. Before we start talking about this SPF powder, I have already done quite a few SPF powder reviews, including the Physician's Formula powder, the Mineral Fusion powder, and then the Derma E powder. So if you guys are curious and how this compares to those, those will all be linked below for you. This product is a broad spectrum SPF 30 with 2.51 grams of product and it retails for $29. So not the most affordable, but kind of comparable to some of the other ones that I have reviewed. And the only active ingredient in this powder is zinc oxide. So it has 19.24% zinc oxide, no chemical filters, nothing else, just good old zinc. I'm gonna quickly read the product claims from their site so we can see how it actually holds up to those claims. So it says, this silky loose powder with gentle mineral SPF 30 enhancement features a built-in brush to seamlessly touch up your sun protection and refine skin on the go. It's supposed to minimize the look of pores and shine, has vitamin C and E in it to help to strengthen the skin, has a translucent, finely milled powder, and it says it layers perfectly over moisturizer with SPF. So compared to some of the other SPF powders that I've reviewed, I would say this one has the longest ingredient list and actually has quite a few really nice ingredients in it. So it does have ceramide NP, which is a skin replenishing ingredient. We often talk about ceramides as it relates to the brand CeraVe because all of their products have their three essential ceramide blend. So ceramide NP is one of those three essential ceramides that is included in CeraVe products and has skin replenishing properties. Like the product claims stated, this also also does have vitamin C and vitamin E in it, which have antioxidant properties for the skin. This also has olive glycerides, which are antioxidants that help to hydrate the skin, and willow bark extract, which is a skin soothing ingredient. And this one also has retinol palmitate in it, similar to that mineral fusion powder, which is another antioxidant for the skin. That is just vitamin A. And then the last thing worth mentioning is that this does have iron oxides in it to help to give this product that pigment, because while it says it's translucent, there definitely is a little bit of color to it and it's not completely white which is a good thing usually in this situation when it comes to an SPF powder so it does have iron oxides I've talked about iron oxides quite a few times on this channel before and why it's beneficial to use sunscreen with iron oxides in it so I will link some of those videos below but it probably doesn't have that much in it because it is last on the ingredient label. So right off the bat, I'm very impressed by that ingredient label, which doesn't surprise me at all since this is from Paula's Choice and they do quite a bit of extensive research and education around skincare science. So I was really excited to read through that ingredient label and it definitely impresses me more than some of the other sunscreens that I've reviewed so far. I don't care as much when it comes to an SPF powder, if it has really, really nice ingredients in it. Of course, I don't wanna put anything on my skin that's gonna cause irritation or dry it out, but if it has a pretty stripped back ingredient label, that's fine with me because I don't use SPF powders that frequently. And I know that the rest of my skincare products that I have used prior to applying this have those skin loving ingredients in them already. So it's not the end of the world for me if an SPF powder does not have some of those ingredients, but it is nice to see for a change that this does have a few really nice ingredients for the skin. And also I think is something that makes that $29 price point worth it, more so than some of the other ones. So that Mineral Fusion SPF powder, I believe was around $25 and Derma E was 29. So a little bit less expensive, but relatively in the same ballpark when it comes to a price point. And those ones definitely did not have as much as far as really beneficial skincare ingredients goes. So let's talk about the actual, oh my gosh, you guys, <laughs> I swear <laughs> I am the klutziest person on the planet. I drop, spill, everything, I trip, I I apologize. I feel like it's so distracting when I'm dropping things in every video. So this is what the product actually looks like. Same exact packaging as the last two SPF powders that I reviewed where we have the SPF powder down here, the brush attached to it, 
It is called an on-the-go shielding powder. So the idea is that you're supposed to be able to throw it in your purse, throw it in your pocket, and bring it with you on the go. I'm not a huge fan of this kind of packaging when it comes to an SPF powder. Just as I've started to test more, I realize how much it bugs me because I can't really truly see how much powder is coming out. For the purpose of this review, I did find that this one disperses more product than some of the others. So I wanted to keep it in the packaging just to see kind of how I felt about it throughout the rest of the day and throughout all of my applications. So I did keep this one in. I will show you guys how much powder comes out. you can see right there oh yeah so because of that I did feel more comfortable leaving this in the original packaging and this brush is actually really really nice it's much softer than the Derma E brush and the mineral fusion brush it's a little bit wider maybe a little bit shorter it just it's better shaped for even application of SPF which is definitely important we want to make sure that our face is evenly covered for all over protection. So because of that, I was like, you know what? Let's just leave it. The brush does feel really, really nice and soft. So again, makes that $29 price point more worth it. And as you guys see on the back of my hand, this is by no means translucent. It definitely does have a bit of color to it. I would say I'm seeing a little bit of a pink undertone pull through on the back of my hand because I have warm toned skin. I would consider this to be more of a neutral powder, so something that should probably work for a variety of skin tones. It's definitely not fully translucent, but I have come to discover that I prefer that in an SPF powder because ones that are actually translucent oftentimes end up leaving you with an intense white cast on the face, which is a nightmare for a product that's intended to be reapplied over and over because then you're just getting whiter and whiter. It's not good. It's not a cute look. So this is definitely something that is going to be a better option for those of you that have darker skin tones than something that is fully translucent and white and leaves that white cast. You would have to see for yourself and see how it kind of blends in. It's just hard for me to predict that, but just because I do see that color come off, it probably won't work for a lot of you that do have really deep skin. So can we please see SPF powders with deeper colors available? Thank you so much. One size does not fit all when it comes to sunscreen. It's starting to drive me insane. We need more color variety. We need darker colors available. Come on. Okay, now let's actually talk about how this powder looks and feels on the skin. So for this review, I thought I would do things a little bit differently. In my previous wear tests, I was just kind of talking through things with you guys as we went along the day. But I feel like in a lot of those, there's not that much of a change from each reapplication. And I kind of felt like a broken record. I was saying the same things each time we were reapplying. So instead, I thought I would just show you guys a little video reel of all of the reapplications throughout the day and then the initial application and I can just kind of talk through all of the things that I was seeing and feeling as you guys can kind of watch the reapplication happen. So hopefully this way just makes it a little bit more streamlined for you guys. So upon initial application, I did have a little bit of a hard time seeing how much product was coming out of the powder. But again, like I said, I feel like compared to the others that I've tried, more was coming out. So I just rolled with it and I realized that if I just stopped in between kind of each section of my face and reshook it on the back of my hand, that allowed more powder to disperse up through the brush so that I could make sure that I was actually getting more powder on the rest of my face. So I would not recommend just kind of giving it one shake and trying to use that for your entire face because you're not going to get even adequate coverage that way. I would, you know, do like your forehead, shake it off, do part of your cheek, jawline, other part of your cheek, kind of in like three to four sections, if you will. So I found that that worked best for me. And then upon that first application, I thought that this powder looked really, really nice on the skin. I'm feeling oily today in general. I mean, it's like 92 degrees outside, very humid. So it's just warm. 
but I do feel like this did a good job initially of mattifying some of those oils for me that were getting to be a little bit excessive in the T-zone area, but not in a way that looked super dry or super flat and matte. I think it just looks really nice on my skin. There's no white cast, and while there is a bit of color to this when I'm looking at it on the back of my hand, it's not something that I feel like really translated onto my face, so it didn't mess up the color of my foundation. It didn't distort it in any way, and I also found that this did not really remove much of my bronzer and blush and highlight, which is something that is very important to me because if I'm using an SPF powder, it's because I'm wearing makeup, and I don't want this to delete my makeup. You guys know that by now. So that was the first application, all was good there. And then here we are for the first reapplication. So I definitely, like I said, was feeling oily. And unfortunately, this did not minimize the shine for me long term. So while it did give me that initial mattifying effect, it definitely started to come back through after a couple hours. But I do feel that this first reapplication looked really, really nice. So again, no white cast no dry patches. It did kind of mattify my oils again here, but you'll see for the rest of the reapplication clips that it did not continue to do that. And I just felt that it built it on top of that really well. And again, this brush is so soft. I actually was enjoying reapplying it. So that's the first reapplication, really no major change there. I'm going to roll footage here for you guys and stop blabbering so you can just watch and I'll put a little note for which reapplication it is. Essentially, the same exact things held true the entire time. My oil started to resurface. It did initially mattify me, but the long-term shine control was not there. It looked really nice and soft on the skin. It felt nice on the skin. I didn't have any issues with any of the reapplications. So let's roll footage. You guys can check that out for a sec. All right, so I thought we would just do one final reapplication here on camera. We can just talk through it together. I do want to get a closer up look at my pores because this does claim to minimize the appearance of pores. Also, you guys will have to excuse me. I just have had some serious face mask irritation going on for the past couple weeks, which of course is not ideal for skincare application clips, especially any kind of a powder, but I'm not going to stop filming because I have skin irritation. So I do have a little bit of dryness and flakiness. I have a little mask breakout that has started to fade away, but was there full force. So it's been a doozy. You guys feel my pain. Yeah, like look how shiny I look through here. This is kind of crazy. For how many times I've reapplied that powder already, this just, this is not oil control at all. So this might minimize my pores a little. Oh, just realized I have like a splotch in the center of my forehead from that. Okay, so if you're super fair, keep that in mind. You can definitely see that pigment there. It might have a little bit of a pore minimizing effect, but honestly, nothing that feels that noticeable for me. I feel like it's just because it's a powder, so it's going to settle into those pores a little bit. And I don't know, I just feel like most powders kind of accentuate texture or pores in the cheek area for me. There are very few that truly blur the pores because it's a powder. You know, so I wouldn't say that this is particularly amazing in the poor minimizing category or the shine minimizing category at that, but I think it still looks really good on the skin. So overall thoughts and final review of this SPF powder. Is it worth the $29? I think if you're somebody that gets a lot of use out of an SPF powder, it is worth it because it does have nice ingredients, it's fragrance free, there are no concerning ingredients, and it does, it looks really nice on the skin. So all of those things are great. I mean, I guess you'll just have to decide if that's worth $29 to you or not. While I'm not obsessed with this kind of packaging, this is actually the best out of all of the ones I've tried and especially this brush is really, really nice and soft as well. 
So I would say this is something that's going to work for most skin types. Like I said, it's not going to give you oil control if you're extremely oily, so you could try to use something else for that. But you could still use this, you know, in combination, maybe with a mattifying powder where you need it. I think this would work really well if you have dry skin actually because it does just have a really nice soft feel. It does not feel dry at all. I can't feel this sitting on my skin. Doesn't feel heavy. It's kind of like it's just barely there. So that is really nice because not all SPF powders are like that. And I think the other thing is that if you have very, very fair to light skin, this is probably not going to be something that works for you because you definitely can see the pigment. And while it's not messing up my makeup, we saw kind of that splotch in the center of my forehead where it was a little bit darker that you can see you know, the powder transfer onto the skin as far as a deeper color goes. So if you're super fair, it's probably not gonna work great for you. So those are all of my thoughts. It's definitely my favorite SPF powder that we have reviewed here so far, but other ones that I've reviewed might work better for you depending on your skin type. So you guys will have to let me know in the comments below if you have tried out this powder, what are your thoughts? Are you using something else for SPF powder? Maybe you don't use SPF powder at all because I really feel like it's just something that is best if you're wearing makeup. Otherwise, you can just stick to reapplication of a liquid sunscreen. So if there's anything else you would like to see from me next on this channel, leave that in the comments below. I would love to do that for you. And if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell because I upload three to five days a week for you guys. And that really helps to support me and my channel. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.